today as well, Andre Nachbin, and we'll talk about two and a half problems. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. <clears throat> well, we, we, we switched um, schedule because unfortunately, John Wukunin lo lost his connection yesterday. So anyway, it was easy to switch with him. And you know, as an organizer, you know, you can put sort of funny looking titles and nobody will complain until the moment you're supposed to talk. And I was supposed to talk on Thursday where things are getting more relaxed. Now I have my funny title in the beginning of the meeting, so it's not a very good example. But anyway, right? I'll have to deal with it. I'll, so two and a half problems. So I have two, two problems, to, two and a half problems to talk about, and let's see if I succeed in doing so. So, as some of you, or quite a few of you, have been seeing me talking, it's always problems that keep on popping from water wave interaction with topography. So, some of you haven't seen me talk, so some of these pictures are my sort of pet pictures that follow me wherever I go. So this is a picture of the bottom of the ocean, sort of a, a more macroscopic view, and here with the fine details. And since a long time, I've been interested in understanding the interaction of waves, several problems that arise of the interaction of waves, water waves, surface waves, and in, internal waves with these fine features. Recently, I found this nice picture near Rio. Rio is uh, right here, right? And you see this highly disordered topography. And let's see, let me show you some of the problems, recent problems involving highly disordered topography with, with water waves and why they interest me. So my interest has been, and I'm not going to talk about all this here, but reduced modeling, right? Getting, starting with potential theory and getting simplified equations, Boussinesque-like equations and so on in the presence of highly disordered topography, effective behavior of dissolutions, Many interesting phenomena that arise, like apparent diffusion, time reversal refocusing, which is the a waveform inversion process to get what's your initial condition. I'll show you a slide very quickly about that. And also doing numerics with the multiple scales, the fine features of the topography, the large propagation distances, and so on, to understand, to illustrate, validate, you know, some of the theory. So that's the the main has been the main goal. And also, I'm very much interested also in understanding better what is the impact of the different truncations, right? Different sim asymptotic simplifications of the equations, impact on numerics and so on. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not quite happy with my understanding. I would like to understand better this for surface waves, internal waves, and so on. So here's a picture of a, uh, of a synthetic disordered topography of the type I study numerically, theoretically. So this is an example of numeric computation. So this is the, say, initial disturbance. This is my synthetic topography. And this is a zoom. And as this wave interacts with this topography, many interesting things happen. One, that we can't quite see here, but there's along the wave front an apparent diffusion-like behavior. It looks like the wave is under diffusion, but it's inviscid. There's no diffusion. And that's due to the energy being filtered out in this direction. And actually, if you send back this disordered reflected signal, you can reconstruct a copy of your initial data. So that's the time reversal refocusing. So here's the experiment. You send this back. The topography is here. It starts interacting. And suddenly, at the right time from the theory, you get a copy of, that, of the, the, the initial condition. And this is basically the time reversal refocusing of the initial condition. You recover what was the initial ocean disturbance by just solving the initial prob value problem again with the right data, basically backwards in, in, as if it were backwards in time. Okay. But that's just a little very quick sort of review of things that I've been interested in and some of you have seen me talk about. And some of the, when I talk about reduced modeling is get a profile like this, though this would be my topography, and trying to get a good enough dynamics for the problem here along the free surface. So one way of getting around these problems with irregular topography, non-smooth topography, large amplitude topography, has been used using, and this is for 2D only, though the question is what could one do in 3D that would be nice, I don't have a good final answer for that, but 
is using conformal mapping, which is basically this boundary-fitted curvilinear orthogonal coordinate system that fits very well this 2D problem and that I will show you more about this. It's, it's very convenient for this problem to get reduced models, namely get nonlinear potential theory and get a reasonably good approximate system here on the free surface, say like a boost and ask equation and so on. Okay, so this is what I call by my reduced modeling and we do similar things with internal waves. So for example, I think tomorrow Eileen, the former student, will be talking about this using something similar for internal waves or work we've done also in collaboration with Wu Young Choi. Okay, so problem number one. I announced two and a half problems, so problem number one. Problem number one, a few of you have seen me speak speaking about this last year, so I apologize for repeating it, but it's a, it's, it, it's a fun problem and inspired by the work of May and Hancock. So, oops, where is it? here it is. So it's amplitude modulation theory. So uh, May and Hancock in this paper in JFM, they, they derived a nonlinear Schrodinger equation for a disordered bottom topography and got the effective NLS for this case with the uh, 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 dissipation term that's connected with the topography. So this work is inspired by this paper. This figure is borrowed by this other paper that got a similar result to the one I'm going to report, but for the periodic case, and which is kind of, to me at least, a surprising result regarding the NLS. So this case of the paper of Benelov and Howling is periodic, a periodic topography of large amplitude and slowly varying with respect to the wave packet. So it's a little bit like geometric optics, WKB. And they, but the result at the end, in words, it's similar to what I'll, I'll, I'll show here. So as I said, the case is random topography and in, in following the lines of May and Hancock. So one starts with 2D nonlinear potential theory. And here I'm already writing the potential theory in the curvilinear coordinate system. Namely, I've done the conformal mapping. So C and zeta are the orthogonal coordinate system. This J is the Jacobian of the change of variable. So now I have a variable coefficient free surface condition. Does that help me? We'll see. It's a little bit of a headache, but it's okay. And the Neumann condition at the bottom trivializes. So that's, that's a bonus. That's a nice part of the, of the change of variables that Laplace stays Laplace and Neumann becomes simple. Okay, so let me show you one thing that's, that you know, I know for a fact playing, with numer playing numerically with a conformal mapping, but um, it seems to be hard to show, to prove. It's this. Um, it makes sense, but it's hard to prove. So take a mean zero topography. So this, this is just a, a little bit of a joke, a caricature, but a, a very dramatic topography. It's like this little positive arrow a negative arrow, so this is like a trench. This is a little thing, spike on the bottom. Okay, since it's schwarz christoffel transformation, I can have a polygonal-shaped profile, so that's not, it's, it's really no big deal. And then, when I change variables, meaning when I do the conformal mapping, I'm, one way of thinking is I'm flattening out the bottom, if I go to my canonical domain. And when I flatten out the bottom, the topography has to show up somewhere. It shows up in the free surface through the Jacobin, but the good thing, it shows up in a C infinity way because I'm an epsilon away from the, from the corners. And this is how the, 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 the term from the Jacobian shows up in the free surface. So I'm comparing the topography as seen from the free surface with the topography, the real topography. And the nice thing that one sees that as expected is smooth is that a mean zero topography is not mean zero along the free surface. And that's a little bit because of the harmonic extension that the peaks are felt much strongly than, the, than, the, than the, the valleys and so on. And the other nice thing that will be important to use the, the, the theory in the paper by May and Hancock is that even though this could be large amplitude variation, the Jacobian, is, if we go along here, is like, it's like the bottom has been shifted and then you have like small oscillations along this, this level. And this is more if you either go into the rapidly varying regime of the topography, which I will not go in this case, I've done it in other papers, or if, you're in, if it's deep or intermediate depth. If it's very deep, you don't feel the bottom. Okay, so when you do that, you basically follow then the steps of, 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 of uh, Main Hancock's paper. You do a multi-scale expansion. You get this family 
of, of linear problems to solve. This is the fluctuation of the topography showing up here. And this A is like what I might call the effective depth. So maybe let me point out here. A is 1, which I normalized the depth, 1 minus this delta here, which is the average of the mapped coefficient, which does not mean 0 anymore. So one thing that I, I should repeat, that I don't know how to do it analytically. The, the conformal mapping is highly, say, nonlinear to small changes. It's how, how to show analytically that it's to estimate, the, estimate this shift and estimate this epsilon. I, I can't do it. I don't know. But numerically, we do it. We do it. We see it. So we put it as an ansatz, do the theory, and we get a result. So here's the family of, uh, of problems to do in the asymptotics. And then, since I'm going to do a disordered, uh, 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 like a random topography, so it's not very good. So this is a mean zero random topography. Based on the periodic case, then we claim that the random one is going to be something similar. And it is. It's going to be something like which is shifted up and has random fluctuations on top of it. And this is a Monte Carlo that we did to show that if we average the coefficient that comes out of the conformal mapping, it sort of converges to this level. Again, this is just numerical. I don't know how to show this. To me, it's, it's very common. So at least we, we believe this is true. We use this as an answer. And then we follow the analysis of the paper this whole thing is inspired on. And then out comes this NLS with this term that the formula is slightly different, but it has the same aspect of main Hancock. It's just because we change variables. And we get the, the, this, this coefficient and the nonlinearity coefficient. That is this whole, say, this whole junk. Let me call it junk because it looks like a junk. And the A, this effective depth, is popping all over the place. So if I make A equal to 1, I'm back to the previous paper. And these formulas are exactly the same as the formulas in May and Hancock. I Meaning if A is equal to 1, that means that it's a, small, it's, a, it's a small amplitude topography, so it doesn't change the effective depth. It's the same formula. Okay? Now here A is popping all over the place, so we do then the, 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 the usual uh, um, stability analysis for a Stokes wave to see what's the impact of this guy. So we drop this term that's already helping. It was analyzed in the paper by May and Hancock. Oops, I don't need this. And then we do the, the stability analysis for, for this guy without the, 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 the dissipation term and with the alpha having the A on it. So if A is equal to 1, you get the classical critical point for focusing the focusing, which is this number that appears everywhere. And what is surprising to us, at least, was that as you increase the topography, the effective depth goes down. So A goes down, right? So as the amplitude goes up, so as the topography is a harder, a stronger forcing on this dynamics, this regime, then the effective depth goes down and... It regularizes the problem in the sense that it pushes this point to the right. So the defocusing region becomes bigger as compared to the standard case. To me, this is non-intuitive. It comes out. But it's the similar result, qualitatively speaking, as the one for the periodic case of Bendelov and collaborator and Howling. The same thing for the periodic case. As his amplitude increased, he also found that it, it would help. So... This is, 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 is the result that to us was surprising. And we calculate, of course, these, these, these points um, num uh, numerically. And it was written, but I forgot to mention, this is in collaboration with Ana Maria that's here, former PhD student now at the Federal University across the Bay in Niterói. Uh, no, please. KH, yes. So H, it's, um, let's see, let me go back here and see. H is, 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 the, is, the, is actually the physical reference depth. Okay, it's there, so H naught, right? That's the reference, you can put it equal to 1, whatever. And A is something less than 1, which is at the level at, at which the coefficient on the free surface with topography information is oscillating about, Right? Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. All the rest of the, the standard parameters, yes. But what, explain why you top the, the top of the system? 
It's just because it came, it comes out in, 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 with a structure in, in, in a uh, form that's very similar to the one in the paper by May and Hancock. So it's helping. But then we wanted just to do the, the analysis of the equation. So here's the equation with that term you asked. And then we just dropped it to see if the effect of the coefficient a here would help or would play against the other term that was helping. That's, that's the reason we tossed out this term. Yes, yes, yes. It's just to isolate the, the effect of on this coefficient. I'm not sure you isolated the meaning to isolate No, I I mean in the in the, the in the dynamics both both ingredients are gonna be there. The the only so the only reason for tossing that out it's or, or not tossing out is just by looking at this piece of the, the equation and seeing what this guy will do if the other term is not there. But really, the, the whole picture is all, all of them together. Is alpha 1 independent? And alpha 1 is independent. This parameter does not show up in alpha 1. It only showed up in alpha 2. So it's a little artificial. So we dropped out, we deliberately dropped out just to see the interplay between alpha 1 and alpha 2, and that's it. But the whole thing has to be taken into account. Yeah. Okay, so it's just... Yeah. So it could be that as you decrease A, the this guy is making it more unstable, it's more stable, and the other one is making it more, more unstable. It's more complicated. It's more complicated. Well, okay, I agree. Maybe we should at one point look at the whole thing. Let's see if I can get it here. Yeah, I don't have the expression. Yeah, well, it, it is it is indeed chopping things out and looking at, at this isolate. I, I I agree, but it, it was something that we wanted to see. What was the impact of this effective change of the depth on on this uh, on, on the 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 nonlinearity parameter? Because it called our attention that this guy suddenly appeared there. But I agree, it has to be looked everything together to really uh, to ha have a, a realistic dynamics of the reduced model with the full one. It, here, in this model, it comes, the randomness comes in this coefficient here, where there's a, uh, the correlation function is in there. Right? So, it, it, so that's why I'm saying it's really, so that's very important. it's very important, yes, it's very important. And it's, it's, it was f fully analyzed with, in many detail in the paper by May and Hancock. And here, the change of variables changes a little bit the expression, but, you know, the, the correlation function appears in there too, so it doesn't really change much, we believe. So it was a, a matter of looking, whoops, it's appear, it appeared here too. So let's see what that does just in this guy. No, but it, I mean, to a first approximation, it seems to me maybe the dissipation dominates everything. So you can do the root velocity and the dissipation and dispersion and nonlinearity are really fairly irrelevant. Yeah, uh, I would say so. Yeah, it, that's possible, yeah. But it's, it's just a way of, as I said, calling the, calling the attention that, oops, the, the, the effective medium is affecting the non-linearity parameter, something I, I hadn't seen before, usually it affect the apparent diffusion, so linear terms. So, but I agree, maybe still, this guy is really the, the dominant guy in the whole, in the whole business, yes. The, we do not try to say the contrary at any point, no. So, this is problem number one. Yeah, so this, this is the curve, yes? Well, it's, it's a large, it's, it's a formula, right? Right. It, it, actually, I don't have it here. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. It appears here, and um, we'd, we'd, we actually, we sh maybe we should. We didn't analyze in more detail the, the effect of A here. Because it looked, it looked more or less like your expression, so we, we went here. So maybe we should. So this is just the curve. Okay, problem number two. Problem number two is then, Revisiting this this paper by uh, Ablowitz, Focus, and Muslimami, who looked 
who derived a known local expression formulation for water waves. When which in this paper, 2006, they say that um, you know they can consider topography and so on, but sort of early in the paper we said, well, let's do it for the flat bottom because it's simpler, and then showed how you can take uh, several equations out of this model doing um, asymptotic, the KP and so on, and, and, and the topography was not looked at. So during the visit of Focus here at IMPA, we discussed a little bit and said, well, let's try it. And we started working on looking what would be, well, how could we deal with the topography in, in these equations and what would be sort of the, the asymptotic models that would pop out of this, at least in my opinion, a little bit like funny looking nonlinear, uh, non non-local structure. So we, we stopped and we looked at this. So this, this basically is the way it appears in their paper. H here would be the, the, the topography. And if they have a topography, they basically have three equations. This is actually for 3D because X1 and X2 are horizontal. And um, so they basically have like a Bernoulli-like equation that I'll show you in a little while. And these two equations, two non-local equations and so on, and some people have looked at these equations for traveling waves without the topography and without traveling waves, the time disappear and so on. So we decided to look at this with topography. So again, we use the conformal mapping. Again, it's restricted to 2D. So what to do in 3D is also is still a question, which is a good coordinate system for 3D to reduce these problems with uh, topography. So again, here's my uh, nonlinear potential theory. The Jacobian, as I mentioned, is this guy. Q, which will appear is the notation in their paper, is the trace of the potential along the free surface. The relationship between eta and n, n is the free surface in the new coordinate system, is nonlinear, depends on the mapping. But in the weakly nonlinear case, you can actually extract a relationship between these two guys, as I'll point out in the next few slides. So the way they, they deduce their, the, the equation is, first, they rewrite the, 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 the two velocities in terms of the trace and, and n by using the kinematic condition. Let me skip, and then I'll come back to this slide. And then you can rewrite your Bernoulli law like this depending only on the trace of the potential on the free surface and the free surface elevation in the new coordinate system. So basically, in this equation here, if you put my Jacobian equal to 1, it's the same equation they have in their paper. And then, the way to deduce the non-local equation is like this. If you have that your potential is a potential, of course, satisfies Laplace equation, and you choose another harmonic function, you can rewrite this in this way, and then using divergence theorem, you can get the non-local expression, which, which is it's quite. I think it's still yet to be understood. You know, say advantages. One thing, one thing is for sure is that out of this you can deduce KP. You can deduce a lot of equations. That's what they do in their paper. But in particular, also with topography, what is given here? in terms of, say, when you truncate the system in several different ways. So I've already experienced with the topography that if you truncate in different ways, you get slightly different reflection processes out of the topography. So here, our first exercise was then to use the conformal mapping, use, this divert, use the integration for parts, you get this guy, you then substitute for these guys, and out pops an equation similar to the, their paper, but now with a Jacobian in there. And... I summarize this in, in the next slide. So basically, the equation to solve now is this pair of equations as opposed to their paper where there were three equations, this one and two non-local. Basically, with the conformal mapping, we were able to remove this capital phi here, which is the potential along the topography. And if the topography, even if it's smooth, but it's highly oscillatory, this guy is going to be a, oops, a, a complicated... Um, function. So you get this equation here. And then if you do asymptotics with this equation, it's quite surprising that to leading order, the, it's not, it pops out pops some Boussin-esque-like equations, but the dispersive terms are slightly different than if you do it through the, say, 
uh, power series expansion or other ways and so on. So again, my question is, and in particular in the presence of topography, what is really the difference between all these reduced models? Who, which one is better to use in what regime or, and also how can one maybe, is there an advantage of taking this full model like this? Because there's no, re, no reduction, no truncation done here. So, um, yes, so here's uh, a little bit of, in words, what happens if we, ex, if we expand these two guys here inside the equation that look, it looks a little bit like symbols of operators, right? If you expand them, these becomes like derivatives, and then you, you do integration by parts, and from here, like Boussinesque like equations pop out. But then the questions that are on my mind, and some of you might have comments in favor, comments against, or whatever, is um, for example, this different Boussinesque system models arise in the, ten, in the sense that the dispersive operator is different from the, one, the ones we know. And who will, in what regime, do a better job as a reduced model? And also, I think to be further investigated too, is in the 3D case where I don't have conformal mapping, what is the best change of variables, which is boundary fitted, that one can do to, to deal with non-smooth topographies? I, I don't have a good idea about that. What, what is a good change of variables so you can sort of flatten out the problem in the best possible way. Okay, and um, in the last few minutes, then there's the, the two and a half problem. So it's, it's the half problem. So these are so this problem that I just uh, mentioned with uh, with uh, with the non-local formulations. It's I think it's I still would like to see numerics and other things to be done uh, uh, accordingly. So this one is a. Uh, uh, a small contribution in a computer graphics um, thesis here at IMPA in which uh, Dahlia, who is working with uh, Luis Value, will defend uh, next week her thesis. They, at one point I was collaborating, and I mean a small collaboration, and let me show you just two little um, videos and to, to tell you what, why it has a little bit to do with the theme of of um, of our, our 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 meeting. It's not really waves, but so this little frog here. This is not a video. This is a photograph. Well, let me try to be a little more explicit about this. So this was fun. So I mean, fun as I'll show you. So for example, this is a photograph, right? This is a photograph. You recognize it. So let's see what happens with this photograph. Oh. Paul is moving his eyes. I hope I don't lose a friend after this little... Again, moving... So what, what, what happened here in this, in, this, in this exercise? Well, kind of cute, right? So... So what's happening with Paul and, and the frog here? And what was the small, it's really a small... What? That's Pedro on the beach. No, that's, I know, yeah, 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 yeah. That's Pedro on the beach. We're early in the workshop, let's be serious. Okay. So what, what's happening here? What was this small, what was this small, this small contribution? Was that Luis Value and Luis Bonilla and, and, Luis, and Dalia they were doing a computer graphics thesis and so on, and he was using, wanted to use fluid dynamics model to do computer graphics things. And, and then I interacted a little bit, and what we did here, and really, Paul is a photograph I, I borrowed from his web page. The frog is a photograph, one photograph, and the, what's behind the dynamics is basically Navier-Stokes equation. So your eyebrows are under the dynamics of Navier-Stokes equations. Why? So basically, Luis wanted to do it something they do in computer graphics, using physically based models to do this and that. And the idea is basically is that it's a, it's a simple mo uh, equation to solve Navier-Stokes equation. It's done in a not very accurate way, but that meets the eye and so on. And it's a, it's a Navier-Stokes model with variable viscosity. 
So, completely ad hoc. So you change the viscosity and you put a forcing to do certain things that is your objective. So, for example, Paul lifting and, and, and doing like this with his eyebrows. Basically, we put a certain viscosity there, put a more viscous, viscous background so there's more friction, and then you put a forcing so that you sort of animate a photograph. You animate a one frame. And it wasn't at first that it worked. We played with it and so on. It's a, it was a little bit trial and error, getting the right viscosity, and then asked Dalia to do Paul. It's not going to be in her thesis, of course, but Paul for the meeting. And, and then she already knows more or less how to do it. So this, was, this is the half problem that was not in the abstract, not to embarrass myself too much, but that I wanted to present to you because it, it was fun playing with it. So thank you very much for your attention.